Good morning and welcome to Dog Man. My name is Mike. Well, and it's early. It's early. Rooster woke me up this morning. I was in the middle of a good dream. It was a weird dream. Uh, I'm trying to recall, but you know, it's one of them dreams you don't remember, but yeah. So I must have been talking or screaming or whatever. Yeah, I get like that. But she'll always she wakes me up. Sometimes I think she saves me or something. I don't know. She just, cause I know she doesn't have to go out because as soon as I wake up, she'll run back to her little window stoop. You know, and that's it. I ain't figured it out yet. All right. Well, I had to change the thumbnail on yesterday's video. And YouTube is so weird, man. It doesn't matter if you come up with a subject that just ain't popular. You ain't getting no views. And yesterday's video wasn't no good anyway, but wasn't getting any views. So this kind of channel is hard to get. You know, I think this kind of a channel, once you get enough subscribers, you're good. It's just, you know, I was doing well on this channel and then all of a sudden it just kind of wanes off. But there's nothing you can do about that. Uh, just keep going. And the more videos you get out, the better on a podcast channel. You notice I changed the logo. Yep, Miss Rooster insisted on being in it. Uh, just get rid of that old Dog Man logo because that I didn't want to confuse people with that, thinking this was the old channel, looking for videos of, of work and stuff. So figure, let's just put a new logo on each channel, keep the names, just put a new logo, give it a new look, new feel. Anyway, to this morning, I figured I would talk about something that <laughs> I did as a young, young, probably 24 years old. I decided that I was going to take a trip to Las Vegas because all my friends had been there and they were talking about it. And I'd never been there. I'd never even seen a slot machine. You know, I was growing up in Oklahoma, they have casinos all over now. But back in the 80s and early 90s, there wasn't any. And I'd never gambled, known anything about it. So I, I go to a travel agent. That's what you did back then. This was 1989. And I booked a flight. Got one of them cheap deals at the Westward Ho. And I can tell you now, from living in Vegas a couple years later, you don't go on a trip to Vegas for six days and seven or seven nights. Was it six days, seven nights, whatever? Seven days I was basically gone. You don't book a flight for that. And you especially don't book it. <laughs> this is true. And take 500 bucks. That's it. That's all I took. 500 bucks. Knew nothing about Vegas. Okay. Now, this is a story of survival, guys. Believe me, it sucked. But I remember it. I mean, now that I look back on it, you know, it wasn't so bad. But, okay. So, I am living in Ohio at the time, and I would have to catch a flight out of Cleveland. And my brother was supposed to pick. He was living there, too. He had to pick me up. He was supposed to pick me up and take me to the airport. I was living way out in the country. Well, he never showed up. Actually, I'm not even sure it was my brother that was supposed to do it. It was somebody, they didn't show up. I think it was a co-worker. Uh, did not show up. So I ended up at the last minute, man, I'm jumping in my car and flying to the airport. Uh, it was a good hour drive. And I figured I'd get there and miss my flight. And so I parked... I, I, I was in such a hurry, I didn't, I didn't want to mess with finding cheap parking. I went right to the airport port parking lot, the $14.95 a day, which I'm sure now is probably $30 a day. And I parked in there. Figured I'd just settle up. You know, it's going to cost me, but um, I can get into the airport quicker. So I parked there, and I get into the airport, get on my flight. I made the flight in time, and it's going to Detroit. And it's probably a three-hour flight, three-and-a-half-hour flight from Cleveland. But we got a layover in Detroit. Four-hour layover in Detroit. And I've got this brand-new state-of-the-art 
camcorder that's like this big and I hook up with these German people people from Germany I don't know where they were going they weren't going to Vegas so we get it and we're in the bar you know and it's not cheap in the bar in the airport even in their uh, 80s it's not cheap and we're drinking beer and back then you know you could get loaded get on the plane nobody cared and we had quite a few beers and so I got some, I was filming them, and none of them spoke English, man. Just very, one guy spoke very broken, just brief words, but I was hanging out with these guys. And uh, <laughs> three hour, three and a half, four hours, oh, it was a long time. Finally, get on the plane, and the minute I get on the plane, I'm out. And next thing I know, the, the flight attendant's waking me up, you know, because I'd had a few beers. Hey, hey, we're here. We're in Vegas. Uh, okay, so I get out and I'm in a cloud as it is. And I'm staying at the Westward Ho, which is no longer there. And it was not nothing fancy back then. It was one of the older casinos. So instead of getting a, the, uh, waiting on the hotel shuttle, I get a limo. I got 500 bucks and I've even got less than that because I spent hours in an airport in Detroit. So I'm probably down, I probably spent 50 bucks in there. And I get a limo that costs 50 bucks. Okay. So now I'm down to like 400 bucks. So I, he gets me the Westward Ho. I think I probably tipped him 20. I wasn't, didn't know much about any of that then. And so I get all my stuff, throw it in the room, go right to the casino. And I'm like mesmerized. I ain't never seen nothing like this, man. All them machines. This is back when the machines had the coins. The coins was coming out. You'd get a jackpot and spill out on the floor. Yeah, them kind of machines. They didn't have no stinking tickets. You had to get your hands dirty with the quarters and the dollars. So I find me a machine. And I'm reading the instructions on it. And I'm looking at people, watching people. I don't know how to work this thing. So I stick, I get my, I think I was playing quarters. Uh, I don't even think they took cash at the time. You, I don't even think you could put dollars. You had to get quarters. I can't remember. You might have been able to. Well, to skip through all that and make a long story short, within an hour, one hour, I was broke. I was dead broke one hour in vegas and i ain't got no money and guess what i got seven days to stay there so i went back to the room just with a feeling i will never forget it's just like oh man i'm screwed what am i i can't eat i can't do nothing went back to the room went to bed woke up next morning and it took a few minutes for it to come back to me. Oh, you don't got no money, man. You ain't got no money. Didn't have no credit cards. Didn't have any of that. But what I did have was a big brand new state-of-the-art camcorder. Had one of them. I think I paid like $2,500 for it on credit. A J.C. Penny. Yeah. And uh, one of the first credit cards I ever got. Yeah, first thing I ever bought. $2,500 can't. Why I bought that, I have no idea to this day. But I got something I can sell or pawn or whatever. So I get in, I, I go down the strip. And guess where I go? I didn't even know this at the time. I didn't even know this. So I, there's a pawn shop. And you can't go in there. You have to ring the bell. And the guy lets you in. Okay. So I go in there, and it was a long walk, and it was hot, okay? Not only did I go to Vegas with 500 bucks, but I went in July. July. I ain't never felt no heat like that, and I grew up in Oklahoma. So I go in this pawn shop, and I pull out this big old camcorder, and, I, and the guy, he, he said, well, I'll give you 300 bucks. I'm like, three? I never dealt with no pawn shop, you know? 300 bucks? He says, take it or leave it. You ain't going to, nobody going to give you any more. I go, all right, all right. And then I left. I got my 300 bucks. Come to find out, that was the Pawn Stars Pawn Shop. 
And that was the old dude, I believe. I remember him well. Because when that show came on, I'm like, I've seen this guy. And then I looked at the dang camera. I thought I fixed it. I am pretty much sure that's who it was. I uh, don't know if he was even in business at the time. But it was that pawn shop, for sure. But anyway, I got my 300 bucks. Well... I wasn't an idiot. I knew that my newfound passion of gambling you know, wasn't going to be a career. And I was staying at the uh, Westward Ho, but the Stardust was next door. So I went in there, man, they got this little horseshoe type bar. But you could go in there, and if you had a roll of quarters and you was playing the machines at the bar, you, you, your drinks were free. But if you weren't playing, they were a dollar ten. Which now I guarantee you they're not a dollar ten. Which a dollar ten, you know, you got three hundred bucks. Hey, you, you can put away some time in there. So when I wasn't walking around and checking things out, I was sitting in that bar in a horseshoe, and it was a like a horseshoe shaped bar, a round oval bar with a stage back there, and they'd have good bands back there. So I sat pretty much in that bar for that whole week. Just nursing. I figured I'd order some something that was nasty that I wouldn't drink a lot of, and that was gin and tonic. I never had a mixed drink like that. And <laughs> after a couple of days of drinking them, I started liking them. And oh, what a! I that week felt like six weeks. And I was living on hot dogs and ninety-nine cent uh, shrimp cocktails. And cheap buffets, if I walked down to the Sahara, you could get a, like a buffet for a couple bucks at certain times. And then I'd go to the Sands, they had a nice buffet. And later when I moved to Vegas to work for the newspaper there, we would go to the Sands all the time. I don't know how many of those free mug, coffee mugs I had from the Sands. Good Lord. You can still, I think I, st I had one up until a couple years ago. But that was a lesson well learned. Uh, so I, you know, I never did get the camcorder back. And I didn't gamble the rest of the time I was there because, you know, a week is a long time to sit with no money. And you're going to go hungry. But I'm sure my story was not the only one like that. But yeah, if you go to Vegas, man, even then, I should have came with a minimum of five grand. <laughs> you don't go there with 500 bucks well i didn't know you know and uh yeah so that was my vegas story and i'm sticking to it and it sucked but if i had not had that camera i would end up having to call somebody you know have them send me some money uh I, i'm not the one that likes sitting in a hotel room and these were kind of boring and they were on the first floor there was nothing to see and, uh, yeah, I was kind of sad when they blew up the Stardust because I had a whole week, a week's worth of memories there. Met a lot of people. Uh, it was something else. Where we at? 13 minutes. I got to get off here. But that's my Vegas story. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on tomorrow's. Maybe I'll talk about another place. Maybe we'll just talk about some of the places I've lived and, and the culture shocks. Uh, Minnesota is one of them. Yep, that was one of the first places I ever lived outside the military uh, on my own. So maybe we'll talk about that on another episode. Happy trails. Oh, yeah. Had to come back and tell you. <laughs> I got back to Cleveland Airport and I was dead broke. And, you know, my car is in the parking. And I, I just pulled up there. I said, dude, I, I just got back from Vegas. I'm dead broke. Uh, and he, he said, he gave me a piece of paper. He said, just mail it into here. I'm like, Phew. yep, I forgot about the car. Happy trails.